We ready? Here we go. Welcome back to the Y Experience, friends. I am your host, JJ Cannon, and I hope y'all had an amazing week and weekend. So glad to have y'all back. You know, it's uh, it's graduation time, and Saturday, we, my family and I, we were able to go and celebrate with our niece, who's graduating from high school. And, uh, you know, it brought back all kinds of great memories of whenever I was graduating from high school and then had my whole future in front of me and trying to figure out what in the world I was going to do with myself. And, uh, boy, have I. You know, it was also Mother's Day. And uh, I have to say a special happy Mother's Day to my mom and my beautiful wife, Hope, who have supported me over the years and have always uh, in, you know, used encouraging words to, to uplift me. And so I greatly thank you. I love you, Mom, and I love you, Hope. Uh, what else? You know, I, I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, last week, we also launched our new website, the Y Experience with JJ Cannon, and uh, you can take a look at it at the yexp.com, and it's pretty cool. It kind of directs everybody to the content that we're creating, uh, and direct is my favorite, and I want to go to that. For all of our supporters who uh, support the show, thank you, all of our Patreons. If you want to help support the Patreon page, please check out Patreon. We also have one of our charities that are near and dear to our hearts, uh, Heroes for Children, on here as well. And if you ever want to contribute to those guys, please hit this donate button down here. And if you ever want to contact me and you have a cool story that you'd like to submit or share on our show, please scroll all the way down and uh, let us know about your story. And quite possibly we can have you on. Uh, if you hit this direct button on our website, it takes you to the second page. And if you want to catch up on it, everything or anything that we've been doing in the past, please hit that direct button. And uh, you can listen to our podcast instantly from our website. So thanks, Mike. So today we have a super special guest on here. Uh, a good friend of mine, somebody that I've met out in the... Uh, out in the public, you know, just by asking questions, talking to people uh, is always the easiest way to to meet interesting people. And that I certainly did. My daughters and I, and, and as you know, we, we like going to the museum. And uh, the Glacelle, they have the, the big bean out there. And while we were out there, I ran in to Jonathan Delgado, who is the CEO of Popston, uh, which is a popsicle uh firm that that makes popsicles for uh, for kids and families to enjoy so hey jonathan how you how doing? doing great thanks for having me in your show oh yeah thanks. absolutely you know whenever i met with you uh you know out at the glazelle and we were at that outdoor museum space that they have yeah, and, the, you, and the you had sculpture a, garden yeah and you had to stand and what caught my eye were these beautiful popsicles that you were that you were selling over there yeah, everything is handmade, you know, uh, everything that I use for the fruit uh, pops, it's got to be seasonal, you know, so whatever it's, it's, it's at the market. Right now we got a lot of strawberries, blueberries, pineapple, watermelon, oranges, lemons, so I do those and, you know, make them into a fresh pop, so that way. But know. they're more than that. I mean, <laughs> they have an artistic flair to it, and, you know, I was checking out your Instagram page, and it's so cool how people are, like, taking uh, pops and pops with architecture yeah. or different art and, you know, taking pictures of it and posting it, yeah. you know, as part of an artistic creation that you eat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that was a challenge for me, but I always wanted to celebrate fruit, you know, and I, I, I feel that we, you know, we eat through our eyes. Every time you go to a restaurant or something, you, you see something you like, you crave it, right? So I wanted to make sure that I mix colors really well and that I was able to show off the fruit, like, I have a passion guava mango that I put kiwis in it, you know. Yeah. But if you really look at the kiwis, they make an eight. Right. So that one I got inspired by the eighth wonder, which is you know the Astrodome. So I kind of wanted to put it like a hidden thing in there, and uh, but yeah, every everyone's really proud to be able to support local and to put that post in there so all their friends can see it, and then and then you know just 
keeps on trending, you know, and it keeps on building the the brand, and then people talk about it, which uh, is really cool. How did you even start this? Was this like uh, something in the family? Was this a family business, or was it just something that, like, take us back? How did you even start thinking about, you know, mixing fruit with with ice and <laughs> making these? Yeah, when I was, uh, so I'm a first generation Houstonian. My parents come from Central America, a country called El Salvador. And my great grandma had a small local shop. She would sell ice cream, and then she also sold like uh, uh, like fruits that were chopped in a bag. And you know, a lot of the locals would come by and buy them. So over there, we had to go to the market and pick all the fruits. So they taught me how to pick a watermelon. You know, how to pick uh, like the strawberries or different fruits when they're really ripe and ready just to serve. So that's kind of where I had the background in in that sense. And uh, I also happened to. Um, my grandma which i lived with her for seven years she also had a a small shop and then she made these things that i call them ghetto pops but it's pretty much like uh let's say strawberry lemonade you put it in a plastic bag you tie it and you freeze it and then you sell it for 25 cents so we did that with her and then we did uh, frozen bananas we would dip them in chocolate put peanuts drizzle them with uh sprinkles and things like that so it was a lot of fun and then you know a cold dessert in a hot day it goes well any any day of the week so you've taken these ghetto pops <laughs> to the next level. Yeah, definitely. And, and and making them healthy was really important. You wanted to make sure that you created something that everybody could enjoy. Yes. And, and so there were certain things that that you wanted to attempt in, in creating, you know, Popston's you know product yeah you know well before the whole pops and things started with my wife and i we were kind of uh, we were being vegans for a little bit and we wanted to eat more organic stuff and then but we noticed that you know it cost a lot of money right and then we would drive around town especially here in houston you know how humid it gets and really hot and we would always crave like something fresh but we could never find it i mean now you have more companies that are making that but our whole goal was like let's do something that's good but make it more affordable for people. So that's what my goal is. That's what I'm working on right now. Right now I'm still a small company, but once I get a little bit bigger, I could probably make, you know, uh, have a, like a really good account with the local produce, you know, and then get a cheaper price on my fruit. That way I could lower down the cost a little bit on the pops and more people can have them, you know, either take them home or maybe we could be at a few local shops, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it's it's baby steps right now. Well, I mean, so, so whenever you, you got out of school, was this what you did? Was this the original objective? Were you like, you know what, I'm dialed in on pops. I'm, I'm going for it. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it wasn't, uh, uh, it was never like a, I mean, I like ice cream, but it was never a thing that I always had on my mind of, 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 of me creating. Uh, I always just was one of those type of kids that went to school. I could never figure out what, what was my gift, you know, what am I good at? And, uh, you know, I had a lot of friends that were very focused on what they wanted to be. But I kind of grew up uh, in, in, in my structure for school was not really that well, you know. Yeah. So I even went to college, but I just couldn't find myself. So I was just, you know, uh, just working, you know, 40, 50 hours a week trying to get that uh, health benefit f- for me and my family. And uh, but it was in 2016 when I lost my job that, you know, I just felt that my life was in turmoil and I needed to act quick and 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 you know just try to find something that i can make you know or or start a business and luckily for my wife she was the one that told me that she would back me up that you know for me to take some time off and then that's where the whole the, the whole thing started there's a song and it's like uh, i think it's amos lee and it's like how's it go it's like I'm at peace <laughs> in the arms of a woman. <laughs> something like that. I've never sang on the show. Hopefully that was on <laughs> tune. But, you know, it's something about, you know, that support, that structure. You know, for me, my wife, she gives me so much inspiration and confidence. And it sounds like, you know, that's what that's what your wife did and said, you know what? You got something here. Get out there and let's see what we can make of it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, she's uh, she's also a disabled veteran, you know, so I, I've been there for her as well. And then she's also there for me. But, yeah, it, it, me knowing that she has my back and is going to take care, you know, the house with the kids, I felt like a relief. Okay, I can go out there and, and try something. And uh, so... Uh, so I'll go into the beginning of how Pops and started. So yeah, was this like a straight up street hustle? You know, just yeah. getting out there and you know, seeing what you could do. So I've always thought that to start a business, you need to have money and you need to have a look and you know all these things that cost so much. But uh, what I did is that I was very resourceful with whatever I had, 
and that's where my creativity came in. That's where those pops came in the square mold, you know, and, and because I felt that if I have a good product inside that cart, you know, people would really, uh, they would really like it a lot, you know. Naturally they, gravitate towards right. it. Yeah, they'd want it. And and uh, so that's what I did. We got two used carts that we found at a, at a ice cream shop in Sta- Stafford, and then uh, we made a deal with them. I just put the word pop on the sides. And I got some kitchen space, and then that's where I started making a few flavors. So what I did is I went to every grocery store around my neighborhood, and then just started seeing what flavors would sell more uh, off the shelves. So I saw there were strawberry lemonade, uh, chocolate, and then they had a, a coffee one. So those are the three original flavors that I started with. And then uh, so I kind of I made those, and then I went out there and 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 tried to get into different markets, but I would always get denied because they already had somebody else, either a snow cone, ice cream, or another popsicle company. So after hearing so many no's, I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take it to the streets. I'm just gonna push this card and just offer people if they want to get a popsicle. Right. So it was really tough because in our culture, we're not used to somebody coming up to you and sending you a product, especially in the streets. Unless unless you're in a festival or at a farmer's market, then you know that uh, you're going to expect that, right? So of course, I got a lot of no's. So what I did, I parked by the zoo and then I got the cart down and I went through Herman Park and then, uh, you know, offering people all these pops that I had taken, you know, so long to make. And So, uh, so what is it like, because I... I what is it like when people tell you no, you know, and, and it's like, if you just give me a chance, you know, what is that like? It, it was, it, it was very frustrating. Uh, I would say that it mainly is your mind that plays a lot of tricks on you. You just got to be patient because, you know, I knew that I had something really cool in the carts. Right. And I was just like, man, if you could just taste it, if you buy it, like, I'll, trust me, you're going to like it, you know, but people were just telling me, no, 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 no. And then also I come from working in the office and then I'm pushing a cart. So I felt my demeanor was really low. Right. Yeah. And then uh, mind, mind tricks, mind tricks. That's right. I felt like, oh, my God, like people are probably seeing me like just this popsicle guy coming out here. Yeah. But I got closer to the Japanese garden in Herman Park. And I remember after about an hour of not making a sale, I just there was a tree. I just kind of sat down in there and then I started crying because uh-huh. you know my wife told me like go out there you know just try it and if it's not it's okay you know we will figure something out but I knew that if I went back as a defeated man knowing that I did not try my best to hustle and get out there that she was going to be okay but I knew that I didn't give her the whole you know like the 100% the 100% so I just kind of just started like praying just talking to myself you know just saying like I am the worst you know, <laughs> ice cream salesman in the world and you know i i suck at this and and then but then i started gathering myself and then i started seeing the vision i was like, okay like yes i am on this cart but this is my company and then this is where i want to be in uh, five I, ten I'm, years from now i'm controlling i'm driving yeah, this that's right and then and then so i just kind of started boosting myself up and then i just kept on going and then in the back of the of the zoo there's a playground and they had a bunch of school buses and i was like this is a sign from god like <laughs> i'm gonna make some cells here so i have this little girl that comes up to my cart and then she tells me like sir what's a pop because that's all i had on the carts and then i was like oh it's a popsicle it's just a you know i couldn't put the whole name on there and then she's like how much are they and at that time i was selling them for three dollars and then she told me, all this got is 25 cents. And I was like, it's okay. You can have it for 25 cents. So she took that popsicle, went to her teacher and her kids, and then now she brought customers over. Right. So that's where I made my first sales. Yeah. So but the first popsicle, I got 25 cents for it. Right. And uh, so, I mean, you know, I made a few sales. I was like, okay, like, whoa, I just made like 30 bucks. Like, I was so hype, you know, and I was like, let's keep on going. And then I went to the medical center. And then uh, there's a section there between um, – I think it's Dryden and Fannin. They have a Starbucks. They have a Chipotle um, restaurant. And I just posted it right there in the corner and just started hustling too, you know. Right. And and, and uh, there was one day that there was two fem- female doctors that they both got a different flavor each. And then they got the pops. They kept on walking. And then they paused for a minute. And they both shared their pops. <laughs> So when I saw doctors sharing germs, I was like, I got something going on over here, you know. And uh, so that was really cool. And then after that, then I went to the Museum of Fine Arts to do a photo shoot because that's where I wanted to use Instagram to start uh, taking pictures. You know, I saw that a lot of different companies were doing it. And, 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 and yeah, you're and so Instagram is that that's a different story. But Instagram for entrepreneurs can be so powerful. 
Oh, I yeah. Mean, I mean, it's affordable. I'm going to pull up your Instagram here while we're talking about it, but go ahead, Mike, show it. So you're That's talking the about rockets? You, yeah, I love that. I love the swag that you got going on. So you were talking about it's Instagram. My birthday cake. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my birthday cake pop. I like it. I like and if you see it, the popsicle inside of it, you see colors in it. Yeah. Okay, that popsicle was inspired whenever Coldplay came with a CD called uh, "Head Full of Dreams." Yeah. And then they had the, all those colors in their covers. So that's where I got the idea of adding those colors inside of that popsicle. And then I put the sprinkles on the outside of it. I like it. And, uh, yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of my flavors in the beginning were all inspired by different things. The very first pop that I made was called the Red Ghost, mm -hmm. which was inspired of me getting uh, dehydrated on the first day of sunning pops. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, See, this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier today is how – you know, people are taking pictures in front of a murals, the murals and and using your artistic flair for creating creamy deliciousness, you know, and and they're promoting you for you, essentially. Yeah, they they uh, which is really, not, you know, that's what I'm really happy about. You know, when I first started Pops and it was more for like, let me make a little bit of money while I kind of survive and then figure something out. But then it, I just I, I just fell in love with making pops i mean it's really cool to pick some fruit that's been abused at the grocery store you know it's got thumbprints and stuff and i bring it back to life you know mm -hmm. I, i'm able to make it into something that's really good a healthy uh fresh fruit you know pop and uh you know a lot of countries they're really blessed because they have a lot of fruits and stuff you know and then that's like their normal you know dessert but the fact that i was able to bring that to our culture over here that was very important for me what dragon fruit what? Yeah, dra so that's uh, for the Game of Thrones. Okay. Uh, it was a theme pop, so it's a uh, dragon fruit, and then I made it into kind of like a Mexican style, which has got chamoy and tahine, which is very big here in Houston. Yeah. And, uh, of course, because of the dragons with the Game of Thrones, and yeah. then the chamoy is supposed to kind of like resemble the fire, you know. But, uh, yeah, but people have a lot of fun with it. Um, do you have so do you have seasonal pops or like you know you were showing us the Houston Rockets pops and you know this Game of Thrones pops like yeah I do have seasonal ones like I do one that, which is mixed uh, with horchata and Shipley glazed donuts and uh, so that one's only I do it for about, probably for about two weekends and I take it off and I'll I'll bring something you know and like another flavor. Um, but I do keep my usual flavors, you know, that people always like, like my pineapple chamoy, uh, they like the fresh watermelon, I got a blueberry mojito, uh, blackberry ginger lemonade. I mean, I, I, I think I've probably made over 100 pops, 100 yeah. different flavors. Is there is there one that people are always at? Is there one that really... Pineapple chamoy, for sure. It's uh, one of them. I have some uh, customers that just want blueberry lemonade. Uh, some they want just just want the banana pudding, you mm -hmm. know. And regulars, so, right? And regulars, yeah. So mm -hmm. they, you know, they always come. They'll bring coolers. They'll take them home with them, or they have a party or something. So the support in Houston has been. I've been welc like welcomed with open arms here. You know, it, it's it's really a blessing. You know, that's wonderful. Now, uh, Catherine Hung, she was like, uh, "Where can we buy your pops?" And this is this is cool. Like when you told me, I was like, "No way, <laughs> this is super cool." Where can they find you? Because you have. You have three carts, but you, you have a permanent installment to where people can go in and just pick up your product. Yeah, they can go to the Glazelle School of Art. They have the cafe inside, and then the museum actually bought a freezer, so they have a, a pops and freezer inside. So you can find the pops there every week from Monday through Sunday. And then, But if you want to meet me and get it from the cart, I'm there on Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays mm -hmm. from 1 till 7. Mm -hmm. And and you can also be found at, uh, is there another park? Or? Yeah, there's Levy Park, uh, also at White Oak Music Hall. Uh, shout out to White Oak Music. They've been really cool with me. They have these launch shows, and they always invite me to go out there and, and, and sell the pops. Mm -hmm. um, also, Axe Red Beer Garden sometimes when, when we're out there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's actually a hotel uh, that's really close to me minute made called the hampton inn mm -hmm. and then i did three caterings for them last year and then they were all just like you know what we got to get pops in here so you could actually find my pops inside of their freezers there as well mm -hmm. yeah whenever claire and i we uh pulled over and had had our pops and popsicles it was like i almost wanted to buy two yeah <laughs> I mean, well i did buy two yeah. i almost bought a second one for myself you know to eat on my own so claire wouldn't gobble that one up yeah. either <laughs> But they're absolutely delicious. What, and so your ingredients predominantly are fruit-based. 
a hundred percent fruit. You know, like uh, I used to have an old boss used to tell me, Jonathan, in order for you to make money, you have to spend money. You know, and then so there's a lot of truth. To that. Yeah, <laughs> so I go. I usually get a lot of my fruit from Costco. You know, because they have the biggest strawberries. You know, you get watermelons, you get raspberries, blueberries. So I go out there with two carts full of fruits, and people are just looking at me like, "What is this guy doing?" You know, but it's it's uh, that's my brand. That is what I stand for. That's something that I grew up with my grandma. Um, and, and so it's always really cool that I have that nostalgic side where I'm not making this popsicle. I'm having a lot of fun creating them, by the way. And then the fact that I go out there and set it off the cart, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's really good because on a hot day, when you taste it, you know that it's fresh fruit. And, and so you're going to appreciate it. You're going to feel really good. And, uh, so it's, it's always going to be like that. So is this a product that, that people, people can pick up at the Glacelle Cafe, take it to their house, put it in their freezer, and then their kids can enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Uh, and they can enjoy it throughout it's, the week? It's just like when you buy, let's say when you buy frozen fruit from a grocery store, you know, it's, it, as long as it's frozen, you can have it there for months. The only mm-hmm. thing that you might get is a little bit of frost in the, inside of it, but that's about it, you know. Mm-hmm. But it'll last you, you know, for weeks, months with no problem. And it, and it holds that flavor. Oh, yeah, once it's frozen, it's not going anywhere. You yeah. know, a lot of a lot of the pops sometimes when you freeze them, you know, uh, they lose a lot of the flavor. But a lot of the other companies are using probably like just juice. You know, they're not using the real fruit. But when you use the real thing, it's it's always going to stay there. So what what fruit do Oreos have? Okay, <laughs> you know, so actually, so the ice cream, I really I was making a lot of ice pops in the beginning, but I wanted to make ice cream pops. Yeah. And you know, I've never gone to school for this. I sell, I like, I pretty much taught myself, but I wanted to do a cookies and cream displaying the Oreos, you know, cause I feel that me as a parent, when I used to work my, you know, nine to five, when you go out there on the weekends with your kids, it's special time you're spending with them. So for, t- for, for Popson is very important. When you go to my cart with your kids, I want them to be surprised. So, right. you know, when they get a popsicle from me and they see those big cookies, their, their, their face lights up. And then so now I have a little customer that's really happy and the parents also really happy that the fact that their kids are enjoying this product. So, you know, it's I create like a really cool memory, you know. And uh, so like at the Glazelle School of Art, you know, it means a lot to me because that space, it's really beautiful. You know, I'll see, always see a lot of people just kind of sitting down looking at Cloud Column. Uh, which is made by Anish Kapoor, the same guy that made the the Cloud Gate in in Chicago, right, you know. Yeah. But Cloud Column was made before the Cloud Gate. Oh, really? Yeah, lot, yeah. Oh. it was, and it was made by him. And then the other one was made like in a factory. Ah. And it's just so cool that we got it here in Houston, you know. Yeah, I know that Houston gets knocked a little bit because our our column Cloud Column's a little smaller than the <laughs> one in, in Chicago, yeah. but still. Yeah, yeah no, nah, it's I mean it's beautiful, and also in the Glazel School of Art, if you look at all the windows, they're all different. Yeah. They're not the same size. Yeah. So, are you a student of art, or is that just something that's come natural to you? Because whenever I stroll through your Instagram, it's it's obvious that you have an eye for color. You know, and it's not, uh, the, the, it's more than just a popsicle. I mean, it, it's it's truly a memory, you know, that you're creating. You know, it's like a time stamp. It's like pop culture, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I have, uh, I met a, I met a, uh, a friend that, uh, he's a local artist. You know, his name is Donkey Boy. And uh, he's, he's doing a lot of murals around town. I get a, a lot of inspiration from him and his mom because they both work together. And, you know, they have like a certain... Um, like they have their own style, right? On how they how they uh, paint, and then so he's actually the one that made this shirt for me. You mm-hmm. know, the astronaut. And I remember even before I met him, I was like, man, one day that guy's gonna make my shirt, or he's gonna do my design. And then sure enough, like a year later, you know, I I I, I get to catch up with one of my old friends, and then he introduced me to him. And then he was really cool. Uh, you know, he's like, yeah, like I'll help you out. He really liked my pops as well. Him and his mom. And uh, so I always see the things that they do. So I always try to go to their murals and get inspired. Okay, what colors do they have? What can I mix in my pops to make it look really cool? Uh, like that Van Gogh popsicle, it's, uh, it was made through the starry night, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I really wanted to focus, celebrate the yellow from the moon. And then that's why that kiwi and then the yellow popsicle stands out. Right. And everyone, you know, liked it and, and loved it. And then, so this is cool because it gives people like a creativity, like you could, Take a really cool picture, put it in your Instagram, you know, and, and, and just celebrate color. And Houston is full of art. I mean, you could go to so many places and you could find, you know, anything and then just 
be creative, have fun with it. You mm -hmm. know, you just gotta have fun with it. And then I'm very passionate about making my product, so it's really easy for me to come up with a picture and post it, and then just you know have a saying, something uplifting for for the Houstonians, you know. And uh, it's really, uh, it's a lot of fun. You yeah, know? And I'm, I'm inspired, no doubt, by your story and the creation that you're out there, and then the 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 not giving up. Like I will. Yes, you got. You have to. You have to have that mentality because when you have a business, it's like a dog eat dog. You know, it's a game, and yeah. a lot of people are out there trying to, you know, intimidate you or try to, you know, kind of bring you down. But if you are very stern with your vision and what you want to do, you know, uh, I, you just gotta follow through every day. Tell yourself, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work a little bit harder today, or always learn something new and mm -hmm. then network a lot with a lot of people. You right. know, you'll be surprised how many kind people are out there. Like for me, kind people is what really changed my life right no you doubt know. about it and it's just communicating you talking know, talking just sharing and getting to know people look we got a couple of comments here and Catherine, she's ready for you and she's saying scroll down a little bit there mike um do you cater parties please yeah. post contact information we're definitely going to do that Catherine, one of the biggest easiest ways to get him is drop a dm on his instagram page uh, also on Facebook, you could probably uh, hit them up in a messenger as well. But DM and Instagram definitely is where you'll find them. And that's at Popston TX on Facebook. Facebook and Instagram. And Instagram. So P O P S T O N T X. Yes. Popston TX. And also, how much are these pops? So the pops, you know, when you come to the cart, they're going to be $4. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get like a party pack or something like that, then, you know, I can make you a deal. Mm -hmm. It just depends how many you want, you know. And does uh, flavoring or stylings, is there a variance in, you know, the product that goes in there? Yes. The fruits are seasonal. So whatever it's in season, that's going to be my menu for that month or that week. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, but I mean, but right now we have a lot of great, uh, you know, strawberries going to be around for a while. Blueberries, like I said, blackberries, uh, watermelon, mm -hmm. um, passion fruit, and uh, and then my ice cream. Those I can make any you know at in any season with no problem. So there's some people that are uh, you know lactose intolerant and can't handle dairy. Is there ones that don't have dairy in them? Oh yeah, like uh, so all my uh, fruit flavors they're all vegan. You mm -hmm. know because they're all 100 percent fruit. And then I've noticed that a lot of people, some people are allergic to kiwi, raspberry, blueberry, or different kinds of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I try to cater to everybody, you know. So uh, I definitely have a lot of people that can uh, have milk mm -hmm. or either, you know, their body can uh, process it or they're just vegan, period. And then so it's always really cool that I have those three or four flavors that you can have with no problem. You know, one thing that you also shared with me is that, that you're very charitable, you know, and that you try to work with, um, you know, families that are having challenges like, like I do, my, my charity's uh, Heroes for Children. Is there a charity that, that you work with as well? Yeah, uh, there's a, uh, it's called Youth Hope, and then they always invite me at the Texas Children. Um, you know, you have a lot of kids that are going through cancer treatment, and their parents are probably there from, you know, days, or, or, or they've had a really rough night, you know, trying to be there with their, uh, with their kids. So they do a lot of workshops for the kids and then they can come out there in paint or color. And then so there is where I take like the most bright color pops that I can make, like usually my birthday cake, the cookies yeah. and cream. Uh, I do a unicorn popsicle as well because, you know, it, when you're in a hospital, everything is like really toned down. So mm -hmm. it's really cool to have something bright to kind of liven them up. And uh, so we get to go uh, to uh, give the, the kids the pops, their parents. And then for the kids that are going through tr treatment in the rooms, the doctors are okay with me going with the card inside mm -hmm. the hospital. And then, you know, we go knocking on everybody's door, see if they were up for a popsicle or if they have a freezer, they can keep them in there. But it's, it's, it's always... Uh, it's very inspiring for me, and, and it's also, it just makes me realize, like, how blessed we are, you know, that you see all these kids fighting, you know. Going through treatment is not easy, you know, mm -hmm. and then for the parents as well. But the fact that, you know, I'm always like, man, I'm so blessed that I'm able to do what I do. My family is okay. But the fact that I'm part of this as well, you know, like, it's, it's really, it's an experience, yeah. you know. They have this bell that... If one of the patients uh, beats cancer, you know, they get to ring the bell right. and everybody holds hands like a tunnel and then they walk through. So there was one day that I heard two bells. Uh -huh. So that means that two patients were able to beat cancer. And then that was like, 
I mean, I kind of cried, you know, because yeah. it was just like, man, like you get a second chance. That's that's amazing, you know, and that's what Popson did for me. It gave me a second chance to discover who I am. I used to be a very shy person. And then uh, now the fact that I'm able to have my business and have fun with it and connect with people. And uh, it's just it's it's pure joy, you yeah. know, and then now I have a purpose like, OK, this is my my business. Now we have all these, you know, handmade ice creams and stuff. And my goal right now, my vision is to become Bluebell, but the Bluebell of Houston. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a very, very far no. thing, but I feel set that them, set them challenges. And yeah, goals yeah, you and know. Objectives. And then, so I really want to make this a career. You know, want to learn how to make like ice cream. You know, and then you know, just to make it a little bit healthier, right. using real ingredients and stuff, and make it in smaller batches, and then uh, and having more carts out there as well. Well, and, Jonathan, uh, I greatly appreciate you stopping by the show. And uh, friends, if you're looking for some good tasty treats that are healthy and delicious and also seasonal and kind of special, you know, please stop on by uh, the Glacel Cafe, pick you up some over there, or stop by and find one of Popston's carts, either in the Museum District or over at Levy Park. Uh, and you can also hit them up on Instagram and on Facebook. So. Thank you. I thank greatly you so appreciate much, you coming by and sharing your story with our listeners today. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. And until next week, y'all have a fantastic week. And, you know, I always like to finish out and say I want to encourage everybody to seek out their why in every experience they create. Ask yourself, why am I doing what I do? And what is the effect it's having on me and potentially others? In addition to that ask, is it a positive return or is it not? I hope in everything we do is for the better. All right, friends, y'all have a fantastic week. If you're looking to make your basic home smart, check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop where they have a variety of different smart home technology solutions that help make smart home shopping easy for you. Check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop. Support the Y Experience with JJ Cannon by becoming a Patreon. Every month, the Y Experience will receive a regular source of income from supporters like you who've pledged through Patreon. Having your ongoing support for as little as a dollar a month means we spend less time thinking about business and more time creating quality content for you.